Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is in a sweet pea two varieties of white flowering plants were seen each variety breed true and produce white flowers in successive generations when two such white varieties of sweet pea were crossed the offspring were found to have purple colored flowers in F1 generation but in F2 generation nine were purple and seven were white explain observed ratios. First of all, uh, true breeding means that when we cross plant with itself or self-pollinate in the following generations, uh, this plant would show the same traits. So if it is white, uh, all the following generations also would be white. So we don't have any other alleles uh, that may um, make such combinations that uh, flower would be, say, uh, purple. So we see here that uh, we have two breeding uh, plants with white flowers, but when we cross them together, suddenly a new color uh, appear, purple color, and this is actually not a new color, this is actually true color of the plant. So let me show you something. There is no such uh, color as white, and here is a demonstration. Uh, here you see transparent glass. What would happen if we start start breaking glass? Uh, it would scatter light, and uh, what if we would proceed doing it, uh, breaking it even to smaller pieces? Now you see transparent glass became. Uh, we perceive it as white color, but if we would uh, take one small particle here, it would have the same uh, properties as this glass, just uh, because of the physical uh, changes uh, that occurred to this glass. Now, uh, uh, light, visible light would be so scattered that we perceive it as white color, and uh, of course in animals, uh, we also can see uh, that uh, animals would be perceived by us as uh, uh, animals uh, that are albina, or if we would talk about uh, plants, we would uh, perceive such plants as uh, plants with white flowers. So, basically, uh, I see here loss of function. So uh, we have two varieties of pea that lost uh, the natural color due to mutation. So I know that uh, one set of genes, at least in each variety, is uh, mutated. But uh, what uh, we can um, see in both varieties, for example, Imagine that uh, uh, this plant has uh, gene A and gene B. Gene A uh, produce protein and gene B produce enzyme that works on this protein, uh, so turn this protein into, say, a purple pigment. Or you also can consider it as uh, gene A produce uh, one protein, gene B produce second protein, and these two proteins combine, and this is what naturally happens all the time. We have uh, more than uh, 100,000 uh, proteins, but we have only uh, 23,000 genes, uh, because... Um, these uh, proteins that we produce, uh, whether can combine and make new uh, proteins or can be modified. So we have much more variety of proteins than we have uh, genes. So it is uh, normal that uh, two uh, genes would uh, influence color of the plant. So what would happen, for example, if we would have two normal alleles A and two 
defective alleles B. So normal uh, protein would be produced, but uh, say um, enzyme that have to be produced by uh, gene B would be defective because both alleles are defective. So uh, this enzyme wouldn't be able to turn this protein into its final form, so it would be perceived by us as purple color. But we also may have another variant when a uh, plant would be homozygous for the gene A and homozygous dominant for the gene B. So in this case we would have uh, misshaped protein and those uh, this plant can produce normal enzyme but this normal enzyme just doesn't have a normal protein say to turn it into the uh, purple pigment so here we would see plant with white flowers and here we also would see plant with white flowers so when we cross two such uh, varieties in the following F1 generation what would happen this parent on the left so this is going to be parent 1 and this is going to be parent 2 parent 1 only can give dominant allele this parent has only dominant allele doesn't matter which one this one or this one uh, so in the F1 generation we expect one dominant allele uh, to be uh, inherited from this parent parent 1 and parent 2 only can give recessive allele so uh, in F1 generation uh, for gene A all the progeny going to be heterozygous and as for the gene B uh, this parent can give only recessive allele and this parent only can give dominant allele so once again uh, we would see that in uh, F1 generation 100% uh, of the plants are going to be heterozygous for both genes or we say uh, dehybrid but what is going to happen here uh, we would see that um, here one normal protein would be produced one misshaped protein would be produced by this allele one normal enzyme would be produced and also we would see that uh, this defective allele would produce a defective enzyme but as you see in a plant with this genotype we can find normal uh, proteins that can be turned in uh, purple pigment and normal enzymes that would uh, modify this protein so uh, the color of this parent would be purple and we would see restoration of original color in plants this is what we see in our problem all uh, F1 generation have purple flowers but in F2 generation 9 were purple and 7 were white so let's uh, do self pollination here so basically we have to uh, cross uh, this parent in F1 generation with the same genotype so capital A small a and capital B small b so this is classical dehybrid cross and now uh, let's find what kind of um, gametes such a cross can produce for example parent 1 can have gametes capital A and capital B gametes have to be haploid so only two uh, alleles out of four would be represented one allele for each gene so the first combination would be capital A and capital B second combination can be capital A and small b K 
capital A and small b. Next variant of the gamut small a and capital B, small a and capital B. And the last combination would be small a and small b. And parent 2 has uh, the same genotype. That means parent 2 also would produce the same uh, gametes. So this is uh, gametes of the parent 1. And here on the side, gametes of the parent 2, which uh, also would be capital A, capital B, capital A and small b, and uh, would be small a and capital B and small a, small b. Now, if we build a Punnett square, we would find that this Punnett square would make 16 cells. And as you remember, we have a ratio of um, phenotypes as 7 to 9. So 7 plus 9 would give us 16. This is another hint that this trait under the control of two genes. So here in the first cell we have capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, capital A, capital A, capital B, small b, capital A, small a, and capital B, capital B, capital A, small a, and capital B, small b, capital A, capital A here, and capital B, small b here, capital A, capital A, small b, small b, and capital A, small a, capital B, small b, and capital A, small a, small b, small b. We have done, so capital A, small a here, and capital B, capital B here, capital A, small a here, capital B, small b here, small a, small a here, and capital B, capital B here, small a, small a here, and capital B, small b here, and the last column, capital A, small a here, and uh, capital B, small b, capital A, small a, and uh, small b, small b, small a, small a, and capital B, small b, and small a, small a, small b, small b. So let's analyze. This parent would produce purple flowers because uh, four alleles are normal. Two alleles for the gene A and for the gene B. So uh, this genotype would produce purple color. This genotype also would produce purple color. And this. And this. The same true is here. But here we have uh, gene B represented by two defective alleles. So normal enzyme wouldn't be produced, those normal protein would be produced. So uh, phenotype of this plant would be white. And then purple again. And white again. Then uh, we have purple again, purple, and white, because no normal protein would be produced here, those uh, normal enzyme would be produced. White and purple and white again, white and white.
no normal protein, no normal enzyme would be produced. So let's uh, count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 purple, so our ratio would be 9 purple to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 7, um, whose phenotype would be white. So basically uh, here uh, we see a trait that is under the control of two genes, gene A and B, and uh, we also call such situation that gene A and B are complementary, so uh, would complement each other. So if uh, both alleles for the gene B would be defective, phenotype would be uh, white, Basically, that means absence of color. So, white, uh, as I stated uh, at the beginning of the video, is just uh, when pigment is not produced at all. It doesn't mean uh, that this is uh, white pigment. This is absence of pigment. So, uh, when at least one uh, normal allele present for each gene, then phenotype would be normal. So if in any problem you would see that you cross uh, two plants or two animals that were white or albina and then you see a pigment in the following generation, you can instantly know that this is uh, lost in restoration of function, uh, in our case of the protein or of the enzyme, and if both parents are true breeding, that means that uh, both parents would be true breeding, would have uh, two defective alleles, but for the different genes. And uh, if ratio is, another hint, if ratio is 9 to 7, we would know that uh, 9 plus 7 is 16, and this is uh, what we can see uh, in a two gene model. When there are two genes with four alleles, we can get uh, four different uh, variants of the gametes and total number of uh, uh, genotypes would be 16. So this is all for today. Thank you for attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.